people and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So we had our UK South Fountain Pen Meetup on the uh, Saturday the 17th of November 2018 uh, and it was uh, quite a cold uh, day, uh, almost very wintry, uh, the temperature was uh, around uh, 8 uh, degrees centigrade so we decided that we wouldn't actually uh, sit outside and we'd uh, sit inside uh, near a nice roaring warm fire and uh, it was a really good turnout again uh, we had uh, a lot of pens on on show the first pen I got to try was from Gary which was a pentaton and it's a very small pocket pen made of titanium with a fine Schmidt nib uh, and as you can see here it's actually quite uh, small in my hand it does need to be posted uh, Gary also brought along a Lamy Scala with him uh, which is a uh, has a 14 carat nib and uh, I was actually quite surprised at the Scala. Uh, it wasn't a pen that, that I have even thought about trying before. The nib for me was on the smaller side uh, of, of what I prefer. The section was actually quite polished, more polished than a lot of chrome sections, but I really didn't find it that slippery. And uh, I think I could probably write with that actually quite a bit. Um, now, here you can see some of the pens that I brought with me. From left to right here, we have the uh, Etruria Corsani Limited Edition, the Leonardo Mediterraneo Limited Edition, the Leonardo Momento Zero Positano Blue, the Leonardo Momento Zero Horn, the Visconti Calido Voyager Forest Green, the Visconti Calido Voyager Yellow Dawn, the Visconti Calido Voyager Honey Almond, the Visconti Fiorenza Lava, the Visconti Brunelleschi, the Visconti Millionaire in both green and honey. Jackie also brought with her her Visconti Rembrandt Azure, and this is a pen that I've tried. I think not once but twice before and uh, Jackie is uh, has been trying to tempt me with this pen it's a really lovely blue and I only have one other Rembrandt and uh, I have two Van Goghs and really this normally the Rembrandts are not a pen that I would go for but this has a whopping 1.5 millimeter calligraphy stub nib on it and it is very wide and very wet juicy wet and uh, it is a pleasure to write with and I I keep thinking that I might have to actually pick up one of these uh, at some point uh, in the near future uh, Jackie also managed to recently acquire a new Mont Blanc, which is the Bohème Pirouette uh, Lilas. And this is a lovely little uh, Mont Blanc uh, pocket pen. And uh, you can see here that uh, it uh, is actually, or well, appears to be nibless. But what happens is you actually turn the piston knob and the nib actually comes out and uh, just um, screws out and screws into place uh, and then obviously you need to screw it back into place before you can put the cap on um, and there is a spring inside the cap that actually stops you from forcing the nib in um, I'm not too sure how well it protects the nib um, but uh, uh, but you do have to retract that nib uh, first but it's a, a really lovely little pen the, the amount of detail on that Mont Blanc is really nice and it wrote very very well so I was actually very pleased to be able to to, to give that a try and here you can see a few of my Visconti Voyagers together and uh, these are the uh, Forest Green, the Yellow Dawn and the Honey Almonds Lorraine also brought her newly acquired Penida, the La Grande Bellezza in black. And this was a, a pen that I managed to not only enable Lorraine with uh, on our, I think it was the August um, uh, pen meetup, but she actually ordered the pen there and then, uh, and, and it, it arrived, and uh, she decided to go with a broad nib. And uh, just like my... Um, La Grande Belitza in the um, in the red, uh, it is a very wet, juicy, broad nib, 
Um, and, and these Penida nibs, these quill nibs, are actually really quite nice. Um, and uh, again, Penida really doesn't disappoint me with these quill nibs. It will be interesting to see what else Penida come out with uh, in the near future. And here's a few uh, more of my pens that I brought with me. So from left to right, this is the Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove, the Visconti Silver Dust, the Visconti Corsani 90, the Visconti Octagonal, the Visconti Wall Street, the Visconti Divina Metropolitan, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Evolution, the Visconti Watermark, the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, the Visconti Belgica, the Visconti Istos Arachnis, and the Visconti Medici. I unfortunately did leave a minus one pen, so I didn't come back with the Medici, but there's a good reason for that. I actually have two of the brown Medicis, and I've been thinking for some time to actually sell one and, uh, and, and rehome it to a, to a new home. Um, it's a stunning pen, but I don't need two of them. And uh, more lately, I've not even been writing with one of them, let alone two. And I do need to start writing with the other one again. So uh, I decided to rehome one of them. And uh, so I walked away minus the Medici, but uh, uh, I'm glad that it's gone to a, a really good new home. Here you can also see the Visconti Belgica and the Visconti Istos Arachnis side by side. And these are two very stunning overlays I have in my collection. And I really do love these uh, pens. They're both uh, Powervac fillers, uh, so they do hold around 2 milliliters of ink. Um, so they are very, uh, they do have high capacity uh, of ink there. And they both write really well. The um, Belgica has a broad nib and the Istos Arachnus has a medium nib, but they're both very, very wet nibs. Um, and the medium writes more like a broad and the broad writes more like a double broad. So Gary also brought a Parker 25 with him, and I haven't seen one of these for a good number of decades. So it was very interesting to see one again, and to try one too. Uh, I remember actually using one of these um, back in my school days. I probably was around about 10 or 12 years old, and I remember using it, uh, doing my my schoolwork and, and my homework and coursework. Um, and uh, it's it was a pen that... I at the time I didn't really like much, and um, I think like the the nib writes pretty well, but it's not sort of a nib that I would probably gravitate to. It's a smaller nib. Uh, I tend to like the larger nibs nowadays. So, uh, but it was really nice to be able to to see this pen and try it again um, because uh, it's it's. Um, it, it's something that, that got me interested into fountain pens uh, in the early days. Gary also brought his uh, Namasu Nova pen. And this is a pen made by a company called Namasu in Glasgow. Uh, this pen is made out of brass. Uh, and well, we were joking at the pen meetup that it kind of looked a little bit like a, a brass knuckle duster. Um, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's a very, very heavy pen. And it's actually more heavier than my Medici or Magnifico, and that comes in around about 70 grams in weight. So um, um, we didn't have any scales with us, but I'm thinking that this was probably around about 80, 85 grams in weight. And here's uh, three of my Leonardo's. So from left to right, we have the Momento Zero Positano Blue alongside the Leonardo Mediterraneo, the limited edition, which is a piston filler, and also the Momento Zero Horn, which is a cartridge converter. I also brought my new Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove that I purchased from Brian Goulet, along with three other stacked celluloid pens. Uh, and here you can see it next to the Visconti Corsani 90, the Visconti Octagonal, and the Visconti Wall Street. And here's a picture of my Visconti Watermark. And this is a, a really remarkable pen. It's a, it's a demonstrator pen from Visconti. Um, 
it's a double reservoir power vac filler uh, the the um, metal parts of it is actually made out of uh, solid silver and then um, the cutouts you can see there form like a letter V uh, for Visconti and the solid silver because silver will tarnish uh, is covered with 0.3 microns of palladium and the idea is to stop the silver from tarnishing so you don't have to keep polishing it and it stays uh, a polish like finish and alongside you can also see the Medici Il Magnifico which is made of solid silver and solid marble uh, another pen that Gary brought which I have tried before um, but I do actually really like uh, in terms of how the nib writes and that is the Lamy Dialogue 3 and this nib writes really smoothly um, it's, it's a real pleasure to actually write with and although I really don't think much of the design of the pen um, I am still tempted at some point to maybe pick one up um, but it's low down on my wish list at the moment but uh, it, from a writing experience I really did like how it wrote. Anthony also brought his Montegrappa Extra 1930 Color Del Mar and uh, this is uh, the C model and it has gold medium nib and you can see here on the right alongside the same material in my Leonardo Mediterraneo. Both pens are absolutely stunning, uh, both with gold nibs and piston fillers too. Uh, I thought I would also try and get a photo side by side with my Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove alongside Anthony's uh, The Sea. Uh, and here it is here. Um, the Shiny Lines uh, Dove is from Goulet. It's a Goulet exclusive. And uh, I believe uh, The Sea um, is from Chatterley Luxuries. Uh, that's a, a Chatterley uh, exclusive too. Anthony also recently came back from the US and was able to bring back a number of pens with him and one of the pens was a Goulet exclusive, the Diplomat Aero uh, in the Goulet blue colour uh, with a fine nib and uh, uh, I've tried a Diplomat Aero a while ago and I did like it. Um, and uh, I didn't think I would so again this is another pen that I I potentially might add to my wish list at some point. Um, it's it's a, a nice shape pen. Um, it's a uh, uh, it's long enough that I don't need to post the pen. Um, but uh, again, it, it's a nice pen. So uh, maybe I will add it to my wish list at some point. I had managed to enable Anthony for a Leonardo Memento Zero horn recently, uh, and uh, here is uh, Anthony's. Uh, a horn on the right next to my horn um, from Leonardo. Uh, sadly though, you'll notice a difference here that Anthony's uh, clip had broken off um, and he's waiting a new clip to be sent to him from Leonardo. Um, like with most fountain pens, the clips on the caps are actually screwed into place uh, and normally you have like a little retainer screw inside the cap and for some reason that screw was missing on the model that uh, Anthony had so uh, hopefully uh, he'll be able to uh, get that back working very soon. Other than that the pen works and writes perfectly it's just unfortunately missing the clip at the moment. So that's it really, that's uh, our meetup at the UK South Fountain Pen Club for uh, November 2018. Uh, thanks for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye. <laughs>